Bobby Gaffer here in France and uh, managing uh, RC Lons is going rather well at the moment. And as per usual, when uh, you take a brand new club over, there's an awful lot to get through and uh, consequently, I have an awful lot of information to impart. So, well, uh, let's get straight down to business, shall we? And uh, straight into transfers. There's been quite a few comings and goings. Just before we get into that, I uh, do need to say that my uh, manager support from the team is still not great. And I think the reason for that is he's quite a few of the older players who are here. Um, I've come knocking on my door. There's been about half a dozen of them knocked on my door, um, wanted new contracts. Most of them wanted out. The latest one is uh, Calidio, my uh, left winger. He wants to go back to Argentina, not settle in this country as far as he's concerned. So he's on the transfer list at the moment for 15 million. My two central midfield players, um, again, they want out. They want to be sold. Tried to sell Anderson in the uh, January transfer window. Didn't happen. He's come back and said he understands that uh, no offers came in for him. But I am having a little bit of an issue in, in that regard. But in the end, it's, it's one of those situations, I think, where it could be a win in the, you know, some of the older established players who are team leaders and a bit mouthy, I can actually shunt out the door with their blessing. But then again, on the other hand, like I've already said, I don't really want to get into the situation I have with SC Camber where I think I brought too many young wonder kids in and there was no experience in the team. So, uh, I mean, even though we won the league, uh, I, I think it was just my gut feeling, really. So I want to try and keep some experience in the team if I can. Um, not quite sure how this is going to go moving forward. Like I say, one or two have gone. So let's have a look at the transfers and see what we've been able to do. So the first thing that caught me a little bit off guard was uh, my goalkeeper. Freiburg actually came in with an offer for him. I've not really been particularly happy with him, but it wasn't really a position that, you know, until the summer, I was thinking maybe in the summer I'll look for a new keeper. But I had my hand forced and uh, Freiburg came in with uh, an offer of, I mean, getting on for uh, a million. And uh, he's gone. But basically, Erbig has gone. Uh, the next one you know about, um, uh, Goncalo Borges, he he actually went to Zenit for 9.5 million. Uh, Evan Ham, one of the young players, uh, has gone out on loan to Grenoble, as has uh, Florian Yego. He's gone to Verona on loan. The other big shock was um, Hajdari, uh, the central defender there. He would played all the games for me up until, you know, he went, but... Um, Villarreal came in for him, offered uh, seven up to 7.75 million for him. He wanted to go. Again, he was another one of these older players. He wanted to go. I had to let him. So he's gone. And uh, also, uh, Charlie Fayette, you didn't really see much of him. He's gone for 300,000. So with that, uh, it left a few holes in the team, certainly at goalkeeper. And um, I literally spent hours and hours and hours in the transfer market, looking through all the scout reports, trying to do the best for the club, trying to bring the, bring the, the best players that I could possibly afford. As you can see, we're balancing the books. Transfers out 43.5 million, transfers in 45.5 million. So it's very, it's very, very nearly balanced. Uh, but anyway, so uh, let's have a look at what we've been able to do. So goalkeeper, needing a new goalkeeper. I knew I needed a new goalkeeper. But, you know, I was prepared to wait until the summer. But my hand was forced. So I went to Brazil and I brought in 21-year-old Aurorial. Uh, looks a tremendous prospect. He's got five-star potential. He's uh, six foot four, 14 stone. So he's a bit of a unit. Aerial reach of 16. Uh, communication of 16. And he's got a lot of learning to do. Let's face it, 21 is not very old for a goalkeeper these days. So, you know, in 10 years' time, he's probably going to be one of the best goalkeepers in the world. He's actually coming as a four-star, and he's now worth between 26 and 38 million. And bearing in mind, we only paid 8.5 for him. That's been a, a great bit of money spent. Centre-back uh, was a bit of an issue. It was a bit of an issue before with Kurt Zuma, 37. He's leaving in the summer anyway, but at 37 at centre-back, he's doing all right for us. But then when Hajdari went, I thought, OK... We need, to, uh, we need to kind of step up here. So my director of football found this lad. Uh, he's only 19. Uh, Poole Magubane. 
Uh, South African lads come in as a two and a half star, but again with five star potential. We got him for peanuts really. He's now worth up to 7.6 million. Six foot three, 12 stone. Uh, a stats for a 19 year, year old, I think, as you can see, very, very good. So I think we've got one for the future there. But he can also, he can also, and he has played for us, so he can step into the team now. He's not gone into the reserves, he's, he's in the first team squad. A 3.3 million is what we paid for a Byron Gattini, 22 year old Chilean, again, centre back. He's, uh, he's reasonable on the right foot, predominantly left footed. But he can use either foot, so really handy. I have actually played him at left wing back in a few games, and he's done all right there for me. So uh, six foot four, um, he's got some great stats there. Thirteen stone, so again, a little bit of a unit. He's coming as a three and a half star with potential to be four, and uh, he's valued up to fifteen million now. And given that we only paid three and a half million for him, again, a good bit of business. Now, I'm not sure whether uh, when you were last with me, where Car whether Carvalho picked up his injury, but he did pick, pick up an injury. So he was out for like two to four weeks, I think. Um, he, he is back now, but he's on a fitness and uh, we need to get his sharpness up. Uh, Yego was my go-to replacement. I think he will be a good player in the future. At the moment, not so great. He wasn't so great in the games that he played. So I sent him out on loan. And uh, with that in mind, I thought, OK, we need another top class striker to uh, rival Carvalho for that, uh, you know, number nine spot. And uh, we br brought a French lad in. And uh, this is one of the problems I'm having. A lot of the French players are really not up to the scratch that I need them. This lad is French. 23 year old uh, Jean-Marc Cavalan is coming as a four star they're saying he's got no potential. Well, four star potential. He's got no potential to increase. Uh, but he has been absolutely, he's hit the ground running for us. And uh, up to now, I think he's scored six, seven goals for us in the games that he's played. He scored four goals in a cup game. He's been absolutely on fire. So, uh, French, he's got uh, 10 under 21 caps. And he's got 12 under 21 goals as well. So I think one for the future here. And uh, well, not just for the future, but, you know, for the present as well. But he's 23. He's got, you know, he's got learning to do with him and uh, Carvalho up front. Um, I think we're set for the future. So just look, having a look at the finance screen now, uh, it's, <laughs> it's not got any better since you last looked at it. So we're actually... Uh, just well, just under 46 million in the red now in the bank. We do have a little transfer budget left, and we do have a little wage budget left. Obviously, the transfer window has slammed shut now, we won't be doing any more business till the summer. But it's really, really important now that this team that I'm assembling starts to do the business on the pitch. It's really imperative. I know this season the board requirements are kind of avoiding relegation mid table, that kind of thing. Uh, I did make the mistake in one game of saying to the players that, uh, oh, we could be in the uh, you know European uh, conference positions here, and uh, I mean that that threw threw loads of uh, spanners in the works, and uh, we didn't do, do particularly well in the game. So I did make that mistake. Uh, like like I say, I know the board requirements are that, but if we could get into some European competition this season um, for next season. Uh, that would be great. I mean, I'm not putting too many, too many demands on the players, but at the moment, I'm keeping the feet on the ground and we are doing rather rather well. So the last time you were with me, uh, we watched two games. We watched the uh, Strasbourg game and the Marseille game. So we had a draw and a win. I did say we were playing PSG in the game afterwards and uh, I did say you don't want to see a grown man cry. Well, we got absolutely battered 4-0. Uh, the AI didn't even give us a shot. Uh, every time PSG came forward, the, the ball was in the back of the net. It was like watching men against boys, which is a little bizarre because we're actually not a bad team. And uh, that's proven by the results since the PSG game. So in the 11th round of the French Cup, we played uh, Troyes and we beat them 3-1 with goals from uh, Perron Anderson and Cavalan getting on the score sheet. So he's, he's up and running for us. 
Uh, the game after that, we played Troyes again in the league. We beat them 3-0 this time. Uh, Cavalant, again, this new striker I brought in, he nicked a couple in that game with Set getting the other. And then we played the quarter-final of the French Cup against uh, Angers, who are in the second uh, division in France. And uh, you can see in this one, Anderson, Zuma, Vlasic got three of them. And uh, Cavalan got four goals in this game. He was absolutely on fire. And then back into the league for the last game against FC Nantes. Uh, I actually did go for an interview with the FC Nantes. Or did I go for an interview or did I apply for the job? I can't remember now, but I didn't get the job. So there was a little bit of revenge in there. And it was quite nice, actually, because we beat them 4-1. So again, looking at the goal scorers, Vlasic on the uh, the uh, the score sheet, Sek on the score sheet, and again Cavalan with another two goals in quick fire succession as well, scored in the 31st and the 32nd minute. So we have two games for you today. We've got Ren, who are actually third in the league. So that'll be quite a tough game, I think. We certainly won't be scoring three or four goals in that one, and uh, and then we'll be watching the Bordeaux uh, game away. So again, quite a lot to uh, take in there. Uh, while you're digesting all of that, I'm just going to go and jump in the dugout because we've got this really important game against Ren. We'll see you there. So one thing we are doing at the moment is we're working on quite a small squad now. Quite a few players have gone out. I'm trying not to bring too many players in at this stage because I am going to have to start signing some French players, particularly with Europe in mind, and we do need that money coming in. So I'm working on a reasonably small squad now and uh, with that in mind and quite a lot of injuries as well. And the team for today is uh, the new goalkeeper, Roriel, back four of Cabal, Gattini, Zuma and uh, one of the new lads, Mugabane. He's come in because uh, Pambelli is out injured. I think he's out for about two to four weeks. Uh, Perone is the uh, defensive uh, midfielder or deep line playmaker. Vlasic and Anderson in the midfield. Uh, Caledio and Sec out wide and uh, we've got Cavalant up front so hopefully he'll turn on a bit of a performance today and uh, you'll get to see him score a few goals. That's going to be the kiss of death isn't it? And we're underway so I do think it's going to be quite a difficult game today this one. With uh, Most of the teams that we've played up to now have been in like the bottom half. Um, obviously we played PSG I think most teams would lose to PSG so uh, no disgrace there, but uh, this is a real test for us, this against Wren. Well, we are at home, so I would expect us to put up a performance in. Just going to give them a little bit of encouragement. Free kick into the box, and that is in the back of the net, and Kurt Zuma uses all of his six foot five, I think he is, and uh, he's very, very good at that. Not so great at corners, but when a ball is floated in like that, and he can get his head on it and head it down, he, uh, he scored a goal like that, very much like that, in the last game that uh, we, we played off camera. Very, very good at those free kick corners. Uh, free kick uh, set pieces. I don't know what's going on here. Are we going to win that ball? No, we're not. A bit of shenanigans going on there. But uh, Roriel is able to pick that up. A little bit of a weak shot in the end. So we're winning 1-0. 20 minutes on the clock. And we are actually, match momentum is uh, fairly what in our favour. I mean, I don't expect Wren to roll over. They've actually had six shots, two on target, an XG of 0.39. So, in actual fact, they are probably playing a little better than we are. But uh, we've got the goal and that's all that counts. Half time, I'm just going to say I'm delighted with your performance so far. Keep it up. And let's see if we can uh, add to that uh, that goal and make it 2-0. Ball swung into the area. So it's Wren who have picked up the baton for the start of the second half. They're coming at us. And it's up to us to try and keep them uh, defensive lines nice and compact. Ball in the box. Headed out. Anderson, that's nice, that's nice. Zuma is actually injured, which is not great. We'll just watch this highlight. And Roriel picks that ball up. So we actually have a couple of injuries. The injury list is really mounting up now. So Sek on the wing has picked up an injury. So Sharon's come on for him. Zuma did want to stay on, but like I say, he's 37. 
don't want to push him too hard. So uh, another one of the new lads, uh, Argeolus, has come on in the centre of defence. So there's not an awful lot happening. We are staying on a positive mentality at the moment. I think we are going to uh, just tone it down a little bit shortly and go to time wasting. We'll try and preserve this 1-0 lead if we can, but it is Ren with the ball. They're coming forward, and that one is smartly saved by Roriel. Very smartly saved. I think my old goalkeeper would have probably let that one in, but a nice little stop there. A nice take from the corner, because he's not. we're not going to see the best from him until he learns the language. He's Brazilian, so once he's learnt the language and, and actually can bark orders at the defence, then we will see the best of him. But Ren have the, with that 10 minutes left, Ren have the ball again. Are they actually going to get an equaliser here, or can we? Ooh, could you not have stuck a leg out for that one then? Caledio, ball over. We've not seen an awful lot as an attacking force from... Uh, from Lons, uh, you know, in this game, it's uh, it's we've been a little bit lacklustre. Pick that ball up, nice from Royal. Okay, I'm going to do my usual trick. So we've we've lowered the tempo and the directness, and we've gone time wasting for the last ten minutes or so. I think we're going to stay on positive. Um, I think it's a little bit dangerous when you start dropping down too much to the cautious level because. You can invite them onto you, but uh, that's picked up nicely. Can we get a second here? That's a really, really poor ball. Another great save from Roriel. Okay, last three changes. About 10 minutes left on the clock. So I've changed on my midfield three. Saulo, Menino and uh, Bowenant have come on. And we're moving nicely now towards the end of the game. Can we just hold on to this 1-0? Because this would be a tremendous result. And that is a brilliant result against Wren, who, like I say, are at third in the league. So 1-0 home win against them. It's absolutely brilliant. And the lads are going to get a really big pat on the back for that. We weren't at our best, which I did say in game. We didn't really create an awful lot. But we got the winner and we held on to it. And that now has actually, well, we're in sixth place now. When we play 22, 34 points. I mean, Wren are actually, uh, what's that, six, seven points ahead of us. So a nice little 1-0 win there. Uh, I mean, it's a well-known fact, isn't it? All the best teams, when they're not playing well, will always scrape a win. We'll find a goal from somewhere and then we'll just defend that, that lead. And that's exactly what we did in that game. Not the greatest from our point of view, but we got the three points and that's what's important. So uh, we move on now to uh, Bordeaux away and uh, we'll see you in the dugout for that one. Well, welcome to the Matmut Atlantic Stadium here in Bordeaux. And uh, the team for today is Rory Lingol, back four of Cabal, Gattini, Zuma and Pambele. Midfield three are Avlasic, Anderson and Perone. The wingers, Calidio and Sec with their Cavalan up front. And we're underway. Five minutes on the clock. Bordeaux are actually 11th in the league. So we should get a result out of this game, but who knows? And uh, Diop, as I'm speaking and saying that we should get a result out of this game, Diop pops up, heads the corner in. We're 1-0 down after five, six minutes. Not ideal that, especially when we've got Zuma at the back. He should be picking those out. Right, we're going to give the lads a shout. I'm going to give a shout of encouragement though. I don't want to be frightening them to death at this point. So Bordeaux on the ball, just playing the ball around. They've got a big overload on that right hand side. And they're 2-0 ahead. This is very, very poor. What a bad start to the game this is. The referee is having a rummage for his whistle, though. Maybe it might, might be disallowed. No, it's allowed. We're 2-0 down. 2-0 down after 10 minutes. What is going on? And another highlight for Bordeaux. Header out there. We're playing really badly here. This is very, very unlike our recent form. Ball swung into the box. Oh, and the keeper makes an absolute howler. 3-0 down at Bordeaux. 
after less than 15 minutes? What am I watching here? Oh my word. What a horror show this is. Come on, what's going on? Berate. Can we do anything worse than berate? This is absolutely unacceptable. This game's gone. We now have to score four goals. We're capable of it. We're not playing like this. We're playing like a gang of buffoons. What's going on here? This is... What's going on there? Calidio doesn't play like that. What, what, what am I watching? I'm lost for words. This is like watching us against PSG. And now they've hit the crossbar. What are we witnessing here? I, I'm lost for words and that doesn't happen very often. This is absolutely abysmal. Okay, 30 minutes on the clock and I'm making a change. Uh, something has got to change in this game. Uh, Cavalio has come, up, come on up front. Uh, we've got a twin strike force now. We need to do something in this game. This is absolutely appalling. Come on, is it time to berate them again? I mean, can we actually do anything in this game at all? Right, can we put the ball in the back of the net? We're not talking about consolation goals here. We need we need to step up. A point, I think, is the best we can get out of this game now. And that's going to be a really tall order. That one's trickled in. So their keeper's made a bit of a howler as well. Anderson gets us uh, back into the game at 3-1. I am not happy at all. Yep, their keeper. Their keeper was as bad as ours for their goal. Right, come on. Can we get another one back before half time, please? No? Right, okay. What are we going to say? Um, you've been terrible so far. Sort it out. Again, they're going to get berated again. I mean, I don't think I've berated this team yet since I've been with them. This is like watching a completely different team, this. They're absolutely shocking. Come on, pick that ball up. Pick the ball up. Pick the ball. That is not picking the ball up. Oh, my word. What is going on? 4-1 against Bordeaux, who are 11th in the league. What are we, relegation fodder? This is shocking. I do not want to see that again. That is absolutely appalling. Come on, very attacking. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're giving that ball away, are you? I'm not even going to try. Colidio, Anderson, ball out to Pembele. I mean, I don't even know why I'm commentating on the game now. There's no point. Should we just sit here and watch this shambles? Because one thing's to certain, we ain't scoring four goals in this game. So, and unfortunately, we're just going to have to watch this shambles. And my goalkeeper's having an absolute nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Well, answers on a postcard. I, I literally have no idea. Uh, I'll take my goalkeeper off. Uh, Pandora's come on in goal. He can't be any worse. Could If I went on, I couldn't be any worse than my goalkeeper. Absolutely appalling. Uh, changed both my midfield players. And Charon has come on up front for uh, Cavalan, who's having an awful game. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, there literally is no point. I mean, we're just skipping that. There's no point in watching that, is there? Unfortunately, we're just going to have to sit and watch this shambles now till the end of the game. Sorry about that, but I don't know what, what to say. Absolutely shocking, this. Absolutely shocking.
I should think so as well. Can you just blow your whistle, referee? Because, um... Oh, that's been disallowed. You know it. Okay, come on, referee, just blow your whistle. This is absolutely appalling. I, 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 I don't have words for... I think in all my time playing football manager, this has got to be the worst performance from a team. This is worse than the PSG performance. Absolutely awful. Come on, referee, just blow your whistle. Blow your whistle. Absolutely appalling. I mean, to add insult to injury, they're actually playing with an injured player there. And they're beating us 5-2. Referee, you can rummage now. Rummage all you like. Find your whistle. Blow your whistle. And unfortunately, football manager will always do this. When you're having a really, really bad time and a bad game, they'll always stretch the end of the game out. Can't even stick a corner in. Anybody wants to fight for that ball? Anybody wants to try and put the foot on the ball at all and just show a little bit of desire? This is excruciating. Surprised he didn't get sent off for that. Is that Sa San Maximum of uh, Newcastle fame? He must be bobbing on a little bit now. Are we in 2032? Right. Uh, we should have won that match uh, based on the chances we created. Right, where is the where is the button that says no desire, no effort, no commitment, you're all a waste of space, get out of the door and I'll bring a new team in. Oh, it's not there. What a surprise. I expect to see you all tomorrow in training. You don't deserve a rest after that performance. Absolutely abysmal. And no surprise, we've actually dropped into 7th place with that. Bordeaux have moved up to 10th. So, I mean, to be fair, there is only three points between us in the league. Maybe I was overplaying the fact that they were 11th. But even so, shocking. Well, I've never done this before in uh, my YouTube uh, content creating career. But uh, I'm really sorry about that. I'm sorry you had to witness it. Because, quite frankly, I was embarrassed. And uh, if I could have hid behind my hand, I would have done. That was shocking. We'll see you next time for the next episode. And um, I was going to say, if you've enjoyed watching this, you won't have enjoyed watching that, will you? We'll see you next time for the next episode. I'm not even going to do a thumbs up. I'm absolutely, well, gutted. <laughs>